This year's winter storm affected a lot of homes, businesses, and nonprofits. Brighter Tomorrows works with survivors of domestic and sexual violence. One of its shelters, along with an administration building, sustained a lot of damage. Development Director Crystal Moore is here to talk about that and more. Thanks for being here, Crystal. Thank you for having me. And let's start with that storm damage. How bad was it? Um, it was pretty extensive. We unfortunately at our um, one of our shelter locations had major damage. We had the pipes burst in the attic and unfortunately caused our second floor ceiling to cave in. And as that happened, we immediately evacuated, got everybody to a safe space. And then as the days went on, the first floor ceiling started to cave. So everything in that shelter has to be replaced. It's gonna take us about five more months to get back into that shelter. So right now we're just working out of one shelter, which means, you know, less beds, but between partnering with other partnering agencies and working with hotels, we're able to not turn people away. At our admin building, it does house our kids therapy and counseling and food pantry and Brighter Mart, which is like a store where our, our participants can come in and get diapers and new toiletries and things of that nature. And it had about three and a half inches of water. So it's been, it's been a little difficult. Sounds like you are adapting to the challenges best you can, but for people who are not familiar with Brighter Tomorrows, what services do you provide? We provide wraparound services for domestic violence and sexual assault victims. Um, anything from, it starts out with a hotline call. So they call our hotline and we figure out where they're at in their um, stage of needing help. If they need immediate help to get out, we create a safety plan and we get them to our shelters. Um, some just need some counseling or they need housing. So once they get into our shelter, we work with making sure that they get all of their paperwork. And then we start working on long-term um, help. So they go to counseling, they get legal services, and then we can put them into transitional housing or rapid rehousing, which um, allows them to get out of the shelter and back on their feet before you know, so that we're not just throwing them out there, putting a, you know, a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. We're doing wraparound services so that it just is going to help them stay out of that abusive relationship longer, long term. Most um, domestic violence victims go back seven times on average. And so by doing the wraparound services, we're hoping to keep that way, way lower. A lot of resources there, and we know the past year or so has been pretty stressful for pretty much everyone. Economic challenges, health challenges, many people working from home. How have all of those things affected domestic violence and the number of calls you get? Our hotline calls have definitely gone up. We really thought um, with COVID they were going to go up a lot more. However, at the beginning they went way down and we realized it's because everybody was quarantined and victims were not allowed to get to a safe space to where they could call for help. Um, their abusers were at home with them and in the same room. So now that things are opening up, we are definitely seeing a, a much larger amount of calls. And so we're expecting that to go up. Our numbers are going up. Um, it's, you know, now that kids are back in school, we're seeing the child abuse numbers going up because teachers can report. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but we knew it was going to happen. And we're just glad that we're able to provide the services to help. So what are your biggest needs right now? Right now, our biggest needs, I mean, we can't get into our shelter for five months. It's monetary needs. We have to replace everything in that shelter. The city of Irving is helping with the reconstruction of the shelter, but sadly we had just worked on that shelter with kind of some reconstruction and rehab, and we're gonna work on our other shelter location. Um, unfortunately, that's gonna be have to put on hold so that we can work on this one. So monetary donations, furniture, we are fast tracking these families into housing from our shelter, but we have to have furniture and household goods for them to be able to move out. So we can take donations of furniture and household goods at our thrift stores in Grand Prairie and DeSoto and volunteering, just sharing our stuff on Facebook. It can be little, it can be big, just, um, we, we need the help, we need the help. It's, it's, it's been a little bit stressful. And we have had the website on the screen for people to reach out for more information. Crystal Moore, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.